I took every gym leader, elite four, and champion, and simulated over 1 million Pokemon battles to see who is the strongest. To make things as fair as possible, we've made all trainer Pokemon level 50, and today we're going to determine objectively who has the best team in the Pokemon franchise. But we're gonna start things off at the bottom of our ranking, looking at the 10 worst trainers. Now the 10th lowest ranking team was Brawly from Pokemon Emerald, who is actually ranked lower than his Gym 1 Junior Roxanne. And Brawly is a notoriously difficult fight in Emerald, so I was really surprised to see his team rank so low. But a lot of this bad performance came down to only having fighting damaging moves and wasting turns using Focus Punch. Using Bulk Up to set up would help him win, but his coverage just put him in a really bad spot. Now following that interesting upset, number 9 actually goes to Black and White 2's second Gym Leader, Roxy. It just seems that with all the levels even, trainers could now not rely on inflated levels of being a later gym to avoid the bottom 10. Roxy's bad performance really came down to having two poison types in a series where poison is just not that good. At number 8, we have Brock from Pokemon Red and Blue. And this is completely unsurprising, given that his two four times weaknesses and learn sets with no stab moves are about as unoptimized as the browser you're probably using. Today's sponsor, Opera GX, is here to help with that. Now, number 7, we have Black and White's Gym 1 Fire Variant Chili. And if you look at his team, it's clear that he could also have performed better if he just improved his learn sets. See, just like how Pokemon only have four move slots, your PC has a finite amount of resources, and most default browsers hog these, which can hurt your gaming performance. Opera's GX control feature lets you limit the amount of CPU or RAM you're willing to let the browser use. Now, our number six spot sees Black and White's Water Variant Crest, and just like this repetitive team choice, default browsers can be super boring. With Opera, you can install custom GX mods that spice up your experience. This Pokemon Emerald theme gives you an awesome dedicated wallpaper, a custom colored browser, background music, custom keyboard sounds, and noises for opening and closing tabs. Any aspect can be toggled on or off in the mods menu, and this is just one of many themes in the GX store. It's as impressive as the number 5 spot's upset is surprising. There's also GX Corner, which acts like a digital gaming magazine. It gives you offers for free games, news on upcoming ones, and even scopes crazy deals like this GTA 5 for $10. Best of all, Opera has a tool to import your history, bookmarks, and cookies so it makes leaving your boring browser incredibly easy. Follow the top link down below and download Opera GX today. Now, our fifth lowest ranking trainer is actually Katie from Scarlet and Violet. In a world where all the teams were balanced, I was expecting Power Creep to place the later generational leaders up quite a bit higher. But this is the first of many coming examples where that's not potentially true. Now, Faulkner was the bottom trainer in the first ranking video we did where team levels were unadjusted. And it turns out his spot was mostly due to the levels, as Faulkner actually only ranked fourth worst today. Congratulations, Faulkner. We're, we're so proud of you. With an evolved Pidgeotto, his team was able to take a lot of fights over early grass and bug types, and Mudslap even allowed him to get some wins over Brock. At the bottom third spot, we have Black and White's final Gym 1 variant, the Grass Leader, Sillin. Viola of X and Y then held on to her second lowest spot. But the title of worst team of all time actually goes to Black and White 2's first gym leader, Sharon. Now given his normal type affinity, this actually makes a lot of sense as Sharon has no advantageous matchups to rack up wins on. However, Sharon's one redeeming performance came from a 99 to 1 win rate against a trainer ranking 40 placements higher than him. Morty's Gen 2 Ghost Team could only damage Sharon through the use of Curse and Dream Eater. And because Lillipop's Vital Spirit blocks Hypnosis, if Morty's Haunter was unable to land Curse before going down to Pat Rat and Lillipop's super effective bites, Lillipop would be free to come out and wall Morty's Gengar for the win. But now that we've seen the bottom 10 trainers, it's time we look at the rest of this list. We're gonna make our way up the ranking, highlighting upsets and noting the the best and worst gym leaders for their order in the game. We've also added the Gen 7 Trial Captains, the Gen 9 Professors, Toro and Seda, and even the new Gen 9 DLC characters. Capping the levels at 50 has completely changed the ranking, and you are going to be shocked to see who the strongest trainer is now. So of 168 trainers, Emerald's first gym leader, Roxanne, places just above Brawly at 158. Next is Milo, who previously was the top performing first gym leader with level 20 Pokemon, 
Pokemon, and 156 then sees Johto's Bugsy. Now, in the first ranking video we did where levels were not capped, Johto leaders were consistently the worst performing of their respective gym, mostly due to having the lowest levels. But when the levels become even, we already start to see how spread this ranking becomes, as at 155, we have Emerald's Watson, who is the lowest ranking Gym 3 leader. Watson lost every single match against Brock and Roxanne, along with Rourke, Jasmine, Erica, and Koga. It's also crazy to see the Gen 3 leaders, Brawly and Watson, doing worse than Gen 1 and 2's Bugsy, Misty, Surge, and Whitney. From here, we had Lenora, Hala, then Brassius, while at 151, Rourke would claim the title of strongest first gym leader in the series. Spot 50 would be claimed by Misty, followed by Grant, Lieutenant Surge, Gardenia, and Berg. At 145, we would then see Nessa taking the title of strongest second gym leader. Nessa put in an overall very solid performance, with two noteworthy matchups, seeing her sweep Flannery and the Gym 7 leader Blaine 100 to nothing. Nessa's most impressive win, however, was getting a single victory against Hop's Champion Cup team. A Golding, Aerocuda, and Dreadnought were able to beat Hop's Inteleon, Dubwill, Corviknight, Pinchurchin, and Snorlax. That is as insane as not clicking the subscribe button. Now, next at 144 is the lowest ranking Gym 6 leader, and this is Jasmine of Johto. Jasmine didn't do anything terribly wrong, but her problem was in the fact that she also didn't do anything exceptional. Two Magnemites that could have been Magnetons had she evolved them simply held her back more than her Steelix could help her. Here we see Alima, Erica, and then 141 sees yet another crazy upset, this time with Black and White's Bryson. Taking the title of lowest seventh gym leader, this really came down to Ice just not being always that great. Outside of normal and a single water move, Bryson's ice moves are relatively weak, and this just couldn't make up for his horrible defensive typing of three pure ice types. Now, the bottom tiers of these results are just absolutely insane. The title of worst performing Elite Four member in the history of Pokemon is going to Agatha of Red and Blue. With a Haunter, Golbat, and Arbok, her team is off to a pretty bad start. But because there are no strong Gen 1 ghost moves, her two Gengars were left to rely on landing Dream Eaters, one of which does not even know the move Hypnosis. This Elite 5 team of Pokemon performed worse than every other trainer we're about to look at, like Koga of Red and Blue. Despite claiming the 139th spot of worst 5th gym leader, he was still a able to edge out Agatha with this team. Next up, we have Fantina, then Price, Ramos, and Elisa of Black and White. Elisa is claiming the title of worst fourth gym leader, but when you consider she still ranks above a gym five, six, seven, and E4 member, it's really not that bad of a placement. Elisa did good where she could, but she was mostly held back by her awful rock trainer matchups. Now, just edging out Price, Chuck would claim spot 132, followed by Kofu, Skyla, Clay, and then Blaine. Next is more who would go on to take title of third strongest Johto leader. Morty actually did quite well, often punching above his weight class, but ironically, it was the super early gym leaders with normal types that tripped him up and held him back. Flannery and Karenna were next, and then they have a placement that I am extremely proud about, and that is Whitney. While she's only taking the title of third strongest third gym leader, this is a crazy performance. The only two leaders of her third gym tier that talk her were Kabu of Sword and Shield and Iono of Scarlet and Violet. Whitney's team debuted in 2000, and this means she was stronger than every third gym leader up until 2019. Armed with nothing but a deadweight Clefairy in her legendary mill tank, Whitney held the title of strongest third gym leader for 19 years. All that power creep, and she managed to hold on with basically a single power. Pokemon. Now, she may only be taking spot 126, but today I am honored to present Whitney with the title of longest reigning trainer in her respective heat. And if that's not impressive enough, to this day, Whitney holds on to the title of the highest ranking team with two Pokemon. Whitney is an absolute legend. Let's move on to Iris, who is really bad 
claiming the title of lowest ranking eighth gym leader. Iris is followed by Kabu, then Nanu, Norman, Grand Trial Olivia, and then Red and Blue's Giovanni at 120. Now, Ruby and Sapphire's Wallace will pick up title of third worst final gym, while Iris's doppelganger Drayden takes fourth worst. Now, from here, it's actually Lance's Elite Four team from Red and Blue, which I should note actually did worse than both the Gen 1 Bruno and Lorelei. Next is Platinum's Maylene, followed by Emerald Sydney, claiming third worst Elite Four member. At 114, we have Sabrina, who will take the title of the strongest Kanto gym leader and objectively the fourth best team in red and blue. And I should also mention that this is within the Gen 9 system, so it's not even like Sabrina has wonky Gen 1 mechanics to prop her up. Her team of Venomoth, Mr. Mime, Kadabra, and Alakazam is actually just that solid. Spot 113 would then see Valerie, followed by Larry's leader team, Crystal's Claire, and Tate and Liza taking 110. We know it takes 109, and crazily, Red and Blue's Bruno takes 108. So with two Onyx, Bruno is often considered to be the easiest Elite Four member of all time, but our results show him actually beating out Lance. Kiawe is next, followed by another stellar performance from Iona, claiming strongest third gym leader. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a streamer did better than the Dragon Master of Kanto. The next is Koga's Elite Four team, followed by Alistair, Phoebe, Olympia, Lorelei, and then Mallow taking spot 100. At spot number 99, we see another huge upset. But this time, it's in comparison to the previous rankings where levels were as they are in the games. Falling 43 places, X and Y's Ice Leader Wolfric relied on high levels to claim a spot above 18 Elite Four members. But when we had his level capped, we see that his team is not near as dominant as the previous video suggested. Next is Byron, and then Swords Fighting Leader B claims the title of Strongest Fourth Gym Leader. Here we have Clement, Gordy, Will, Crasher Wake, Mina, Glacia, and Candice of Platinum. At spot 89, we see Black and White 2's Marlin, followed by Juan, Grusha, Crystal Bruno, Rhyme, Sophocles, Piers, Opal, Acerola, and Sudden Moon's Lena at 80. 79 sees Volkner, followed by Black and White's Caitlyn and Marshall, then Hapu, Drasna, and Karen. At 73, Pokemon Sword's Melanie claims the title of strongest six gym leader. And what I love about this is it proves that not all ice leaders are bad, and shows what one can do if given an actually good team with solid coverage. This placement is especially impressive given that she does not have her Gigantamax Lapras. To make things as fair as possible, we did not include any gimmicks like Mega Evolutions, Z moves, Gigantamax, or Terraforms. Now from here, Bead takes the 72nd spot, followed by Grimsley and then Malva. So beautifully and perfectly fitting, we then see Blue's Venusaur led champion team take spot number 69. Now, as an old gen fan, I'm sad to see the Soar get the spot of lowest ranking champion, but when you look at the learn sets of Blue's champion team, you quickly realize what a disadvantage the guy is at. Wickstrom takes 68, then Chantal, Rika, Blue's Blast Toys led team, Beast Champion Cup team, Tulip, Hollow's E4 team, Kahili, and then Peony. Now, Flip takes spot 59, while Rayhan's Champion Cup team claims 58. Rayhan's Champion Cup team is 58, and we have still not seen his gym leader team. This is actually the only case where a trainer's earlier team outperformed a supposed higher form of themselves. Now, Hop's Rillaboom Champion Cup team takes 57, followed by Blue's final placement of his Charizard team. Not the placement I was hoping for the man, but I'm not surprised. Now, Bertha takes spot 55, followed by Champion Cup Nessa and then Olivia's E4 team. Carmen, who is a new Gen 9 DLC character, is going to claim 52 with her Blueberry Academy team. At 51, we have Hop's Cinderace team, followed by his Inteleon one. E4 Larry then takes spot 49. Now, from here, I would like to take a moment and cover the top five strongest gym leaders in the Pokemon franchise. At number 5, we have Sword and Shield's 5th gym leader and fairy type user Opal. At number 4, proving that power creep isn't everything, we have Sinnoh's final gym leader Volkner. Gen 8 strikes again, taking the number 3 spot with ice user Melanie of Shield's 6th gym. Tulip of Scarlet and Violet claims the title of 2nd strongest gym leader, and even beating his own champion cup team. At 48, Rayhan claims the title 
of strongest gym leader in the Pokemon franchise. Now, you're probably wondering how Rayon's team of four, which was designed as a double battle format, was able to beat his better equipped singles designed final team. Well, if you look at the data, the single word that can explain this phenomenon is actually synergy. Now, Rayan's Champion Cup team places in a boat order of where the other Champion Cup team members were placing. This team is barely well balanced with a Draught Torkoal that knows Solar Beam, a Thunder Rain Dance Gudra, a Sunny Day Fire Blast Turtonator, Sandstorm Flygon, and his insanely fearsome Duraludon. Now, this is a team that has amazing coverage, but the first issue is that all the teams we're looking at by this point have coverage too. We're past the point of single type gyms, and having a team with a bunch of different weather setters is just going to hold you back. But what makes Rayhan's gym leader team so good is that he's actually got a proper weather team. His Gigalith comes out to set Sandstorm with Sand stream, giving it an instant 50% special defense boost. If that ever is to end, Sandaconda has a similar ability which helps keep Sandstorm up. Better yet is all of Rayhan's Pokemon are unaffected by Sandstorm's chip damage. So you've got a very cohesive weather set combined with the power of ground type. Combining that with a solid Flygon and Duraludon's amazing typing just makes for an incredibly synergistic team. Rayhan was able to dominate where he had an advantage, but still scrape up wins in nearly all adverse situations. Like, for example, Rayhan was able to edge out at least one win against every trainer in our top 10. And his most noteworthy achievement was claiming 13 wins against the strongest trainer in the series. Along with Whitney, Rayhan is in my top three for most impressive performances, meaning that there is still one more performance to come that outshines them. Now, continuing on, we see Marnie, Aaron, Drake, Seibold, Alistair, Lucian, Trace, and Mulane take spot number 40. Really interesting here is Trace's placement, who is Blue's modern-day counterpart in Let's Go. Despite being conceived 20 years apart and only sharing a single Pokemon, as far as champion placements go, they rank right next to each other. Now, it's no surprise that Trace's improved learn set would rank higher than Blue, but it's crazy that they are back-to-back -back placing champions. And right after that, we see our third weakest ranking champion, this time going to Lance from Gold, Silver, and Crystal. And this is actually a pretty good ranking for him. Lance under performed heavily in the first ranking video due to his poor level cap, but with an even playing field, we see the Triple Dragonite team in a position that gives you a better idea of his true power. As expected, Lance did well in any and every case where a trainer did not have an ice move. Now, 38 sees the placement of Carmine's Loyalty Plaza team, and then almost like clockwork, it's Emerald's champion Wallace taking the next spot. What's cool about this is so far, the series has seen each generation introduce a stronger champion. What's going to be extremely disappointing, however, is the number 36 spot going to Trainer Red's Mount Silver team. Now, as a Gen 2 fanboy, this hurts my soul, but I'm not surprised in the slightest. Red placed fourth in the last video, but all he really had going for him is one of the highest level caps in the series. Once he was put on an even playing field, the cracks in his team started to burst. His starters are good, but they don't have exceptional learn sets. Snorlax and Espeon are also just fine, while his light ballless Pikachu can't do anything to the heavy hitters of the top 40. For fourth strongest trainer, this is a big fall for Red, but we are going to do another video where we use the absolute best teams of every trainer rather than their introductory one. So if you're looking for the dead Red Redemption, you should definitely subscribe. At number 35 sees Hassel, followed by Steven's champion team, immediately followed by his Emerald Final Boss team. Once levels were adjusted, these are actually the exact same teams with only two different moves. So I find it very satisfying that almost identical teams would have the post-game Steven topping out his canonically weaker champion team. Next up is N's Reshiram team, followed by Poppy and then N's Zekrom. From here, it is now time to look at our top five highest ranking Elite Four members. At number five, we have Alistair from Sword and Shield. Number four sees Lucian's Psychic Team from Platinum. Malayne's Sun and Moon Team claims spot number three. And at number two, we see Hassel's Dragon, Scarlet, and Violet Team. And ladies and gentlemen, that means the number one spot and strongest Elite Four member in history is actually Steel-type user Poppy. Now at 29, we have Black and White's champion Alder, followed by the notorious Gita, then Crispin from the new DLC, and finally at 26, we have Diantha. I wanted to note Diantha's placement here, as amongst many players, even I tend to hate on her for being a weak champion. But given the data we've seen here, I think I have to at least acknowledge that she's better than I give her credit for. Diantha outplaced champions Blue, Trace, Lance, Wallace, Steven, Alder, and Gita. 
And I should clarify, this doesn't mean she is objectively a hard boss, as difficulty is also determined by the context of the game you're in. Dianthic feels easy to a lot of players because of mega evolutions and the level you come in to fight her at. What this does tell us in a vacuum is that Diantha actually has a fairly well-constructed team. Now, starting out the top 25, we have Penny's team of six evolutions. This is followed by DLC Lacey's fairy team and then Getsus, who plants himself as the strongest trainer of black and white. Arvin's final team is up next, and then we have Professor Kukui's Incineroar team, followed by Hop's post-game Zamazenta fight. At number 19, we have the highest ranking Gen 5 trainer, which is Iris's Black and White 2's champion team. Next is Kukui's Decidueye team, followed by DLC Kirin. Now, don't get too upset about this next placement. I'm preparing you, because the number 16 spot is going to Platinum Cynthia's champion team. Now, both of Cynthia's Platinum teams are the one with Togekiss, but the rematch team after Stark Mountain has a noticeably better learn set, and you'll see it rank a little higher up. Now, from here, our top 15 sees the remaining trainers share a ton of overlap teams. You've got all three of Nimona and Leon's teams, plus the Mustard Single and Rapid Strike variants, and so on. So to make this a little more epic, we're going to list it in order of top five, based on the trainer's highest performing team. This way, I can give you, ladies and gentlemen, the objective top 10 strongest trainers in the Pokemon franchise. Let's do this one more time. Professor Kukui's only team to break the top 10 is his Primarina-based champion team, and it did so just barely placing at number 10. Kukui is the highest ranking trainer from the Gen 7 games. Now at number 9, we have Drayton, not to be confused with Drayton, who was a new face introduced in Gen 9's DLC. He's a dragon-themed trainer with exceptional coverage and typing, and of course, ridiculously strong Pokemon. Leon's and Talion team place next, but since it's the lowest of his three placements, the number eight strongest trainer is going to post-game Hop's Zacian team. And this is surprisingly the highest ranking team that has a legendary on it. It's also worth noting that Hop's Zacian team has fallen quite a bit from its previous rank at number three. Now, next up, ladies and gentlemen, at number seven, we have Cynthia's post-Stark Mountain Platinum team. So this shows that Cynthia is no longer the strongest trainer, but it does prove that the old Pokemon games can contend with insane power creep. But that's not it, because it's really important to note here that the only teams that rank higher than Cynthia are from Gen 8 and 9, which means that up until 2019, Platinum Cynthia was the strongest trainer in the series. This means Cynthia held the title of strongest trainer for 12 years. To me, this is the most impressive ranking. Also considering that Volkner and Lucian had top five ranking placements, this goes to show you how good the trainers of Platinum truly are. And lastly, I will say, if you're curious as to how Cynthia's brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl teams would perform, you should subscribe because we're going to do that video soon. We're gonna do a video where we simply take the top 100 strongest teams ever, including remakes, post-game, and tournaments. And that will include things like Modern Day Red and BDSP Cynthia. Now, the next team in order is Meowskarada Nimona, followed by Leon Rillaboom, but the title of sixth strongest trainer is going to Amaris. Introduced in the hidden treasure of Area Zero, this is the highest ranking Gen 9 DLC character. And armed with this crack set of steel types, I'm really not surprised how well she fared. Now in order, the next team is Nimona's Quackavale, but coming in at number five, we have Champion Leon's Cinderace team, which is actually a little shocking considering he has two fire types, but at the same time, I don't think any of us are really that surprised. Leon is just a notoriously strong champion, and this is a solid placement for him. Also, technically, in 2019, his debut was the first character to ever beat Cynthia's Reign of Supremacy. Now, the fourth strongest trainer in the series is Nimona running her Skeledurge team. And I honestly find this a little surprising. Considering her lower base stat Pokemon, like a Palmot with Quick Attack, this is an exceptional performance. And if it wasn't for the fact that she has the best starter in the series, I would not understand this placement. Now, coming in at number three, we have the reigning champion from our previous ranking video, Mustard. His Rapid Strike Urshifu team just bested the single strike, but overall, this team held up really well, considering who ended up beating him. 
The second strongest trainer in the Pokemon franchise is Professor Seda of Pokemon Scarlet. Back to the brim with insane ancient paradox Pokemon, it's no surprise that this team did so well. High stats, a ridiculous ability, and amazing learn set make Seda an absolute gnarly fight. And she probably would have placed here in the previous video had we not forgot to include her. But ladies and gentlemen, finally topping out the charts as the strongest trainer in the Pokemon series, rocking Iron Moth, Bundle, Hands, Jugulus, Thorns, and Valiant, we have Professor Turo of Pokemon Violet. Anyway, thanks so much for making it all the way through. Please subscribe and go check out Opera GX. It's sponsors like this that help keep the channel afloat, so we really appreciate the support. Peace!